If you buy pedals at all, you've noticed Mojo Hand, and you've probably wondered, what's the deal? Well, let's talk about it. In 2003, a guy named Brad Fee started a pedal company and he called it Tone Factor. They made some really cool stuff. Later on, he got so into pedals that he opened an online guitar shop called Tone Factor and that caused him to want to change the name of his pedals. As a matter of fact, that Tone Factor store was one of my very first dealers and they were pretty good at selling stuff. So Brad took his branding ability, rebranded the pedal line that was called Tone Factor and turned it into Mojo Ham. This was around 2007, pretty much when I started JHS. Then in 2015, he sold the entire thing, the pedal company, to John Cusack of Cusack Music and now they're made in Holland, Michigan up there and John does all the new designs. So that's a little bit of the deal with Mojo Hand, but we need to hear them for you to fully understand how good they are. And um, I think we just need to jump on into it. The first Mojo Hand I want to cover, it's definitely one of my favorites that they make. It comes from the transitional period where Brad sold the company over to John Cusack. And it is this guy, the Sacred Cow. Now here's the story. It's kind of distantly connected to me in a weird way. I was working on the Clover preempt that you all know, and the original title was gonna be The Stockyard, and I just finished the graphical icon. Um, Nick, could you put that up so they could see what I had worked on for my pedal, but then I saw this? Yeah. So as you can tell, I didn't go with that because they did the same thing. Great minds think alike, maybe. I don't know, but here's the deal. The Sacred Cow is based around the Mighty Klon Centaur. And for this clip, I'm actually gonna shoot them out because I'm, I'm feeling festive, I'm feeling peppy. I'm not gonna do it on all the pedals, but the Klon is so hyped, I just wanna show that it's not complete rocket science and they did a really good job. And to do that, I'm gonna use the switchback. And basically when I click this, it'll go between green and red. Green is the Mojo Hand, red is the Klon Centaur Professional Overdrive. You let me know what you think. Let's do it. Next up is the Rook overdrive i think it's a medium gain distortion as well it is an extremely modified tube screamer circuit tons of bass content three-way clipping selection if you like the tube screamer but you like more distortion more hard rock sounds this thing is phenomenal and while rummaging through all my pedals i found an older version um I don't have too many pedals, I almost do, and this was hidden, but I found it, and the good news is I'm just gonna give it away over on the Patreon page, so if you're a patron of the show, you can win this. It probably sounds better because it's gray, but we're gonna play this one. a good fuzz face design and that's exactly what mojo has in the crosstown it is a reference to a hendrix song if you don't know that song i'm going to take a moment and shame you the shaming is now over listen to the song you're forgiven this is uh, a good old fuzz face but it's kind of unique i opened the back up here q1 is a silicon transistor and q2 is germanium so it's this hybrid thing it's really cool it does a lot of sounds and it has really nice controls one thing that's always annoyed me is when people make fuzz faces and they put like four or five controls. And when I first played this a few years ago, I think is when I bought it, I was like, this is going to be one of those pedals. But nope, every turn, every position of the knob is totally usable. It's fantastic. Thank you. 
Next up, I'm gonna do something that's never been done. I'm gonna play two mojo hand pedals at the same time. It's been done. No, it hasn't. Not today. I'm playing the Magpie. This is a light gain overdrive. It's a blues breaker style circuit. Think King of Tone and Morning Glory. It even kind of looks like a Morning Glory. It's kind of cool. And it's darker. So it leans more on the King of Tone side around the edges. It's a little bit like less present in the mix. And that's a good thing for some people. And I think it has a little more gain than the Morning Glory. And then we have the Park Theater. So this is one John designed. This is a digital reverb that emulates a really famous historic theater in Holland, Michigan, where Cusack and Mojohan are located now. And basically profits from this go to help restore that theater. So when you buy this amazing reverb, you get a good feeling as well. And that's like a two for one. That's priceless. So here we go. controversial words than Klon and Dumble. And Mojohan is going two for two because the extra special is a take on a cranked, distorted Dumble tone. I'm going to change guitars from my very indie offset built. I'm going to pick up a Collins 335 style and I'm going to take a stab at playing some weird math jazz that people who play these amps tend to play. I think it'll be okay. I, I haven't ever played that style, and honestly, I don't even know what I'm talking about. But we're going to hear this, and I will say this. Having played eight or nine real dumbles, this one sounds really good, and it sounds very accurate to the dirty style dumble amp. So you're not going to get your clean John Mayer kind of still string sound out of this. You're going to get more of the the dirtier Larry Carlton, one of Keith Urban's amps that I played on an earlier episode last year kind of sounded like this pedal. So it's really cool and really versatile. Next up is the Mojo Hand RVT. It is based around an old Gibson amp called the GA RVT 15. And this is some of John Cusack's finest digital work, in my opinion. The reverb circuit on this is spot on to a really cool, kind of quirky reverb tank. Um, and that's a hard thing to do from a coding perspective and with the software that he's using. It's a fantastic design. If you click this button, it goes between the trim and vibrato. You can mix in the verb. It's really, really great. Dare I say magical. Dare I say amazing. And I might even add epic onto that. In 1962, the Ventures recorded a smash hit called the 2,000 Pound B. 
That is probably the greatest song title ever. And it had a fuzz tone on it. And there's a little bit of mystery here because this was before the internet, believe it or not. And we just don't know what happened. There are no pictures. We do know that the Maestro fuzz tone was released in 62. But we're almost all definitely sure it was not that circuit that we hear on the recording. We know there are several people that were around the ventures. One guy in particular was making DIY fuzz circuits. Maybe it was one of those. We think that that guy possibly had something to do with the Maserite Fuzzrite. There are two versions. The early version, there's about 200 of them made. They're germanium. They're rare as a hen's teeth, but this one's kind of easy to find, still rare, and it's silicon as opposed to the germanium. That's a long story just to tell you that the Mojo Hand 1 Ton B, math joke, 2,000 pound B by the Ventures, 1 Ton B by Mojo Hand, is probably some mixture of something going on here. A two knob fuzz that's real bright, slightly annoying, and possibly amazing. So I'm gonna shoot it out with this using the switch back again. Green light is this, red light is this, and you're gonna hear something that I want you to hear, the insanely crazy, harsh nature of this fuzz compared to the way they modified this to make it more modern and usable. And I'm going to play Spirit in the Sky because there's also a rumor that no one will ever prove that one of these was disassembled and put inside a Norman Greenbaum's guitar. I don't know. No one knows. But we get to hear this, and this is all we do know. This next Mojo Hand pedal mysteriously arrived in my mailbox with a single note that said, Hey Josh, would you release this on your show? Thanks, John. I didn't even know what it did. I called John and it's stinking amazing. It is the Mojo Hand Dream Mender. This is network television history going on right here on YouTube. No one's ever seen this. Do you understand that right now, you're the only person that's ever seen this? Think about it. It's crazy. What is it, you ask? It's a delay, but not just any delay. It's a memory man. So I pulled a few of my memory men off the shelves. Some are missing because reverb barred them. I'm not angry. I tried this one. I don't know. It didn't work. I tried this one, which is Jeff Tweedy's. I couldn't find the power supply. I don't know if I actually tried that one. This one worked, but it doesn't have the uh, vibrato chorus. John put that on here. Tried this one. Same thing. But then when I plugged in the 24 volt classic, lined them up, put the switch back up there, green light, red light, pure magic, and you're going to see it right here. First time ever. History of Earth and World. The brand new Mojo Hand Dream Mender delay. It feels good to just release someone else's pedal. I don't know if that's ever been done, but I feel good about it. So go buy this. It's on Reverb and Mojo Hand's website. Just go right now. This is a release day, literally. I'm not joking. Go buy it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Today's record time is brought to you by Sandpit on Second Thought. A really, really cool record. It was released in 1998. It was on the front end of a new genre called Shoegaze. And actually, the band sent this in. They watched the show. Really, really cool. I had never heard this. I put it in and was completely blown away. It's right up my alley. And one of my favorite things about this is the back. I'm going to read it to you. Stuff like this makes a record even better. It says, Brendan Webb played Fender guitarist through an orange head, Vox AC30, and Fender Twin, Evo, and he sang main vocals. That's amazing. Just put it on the record. Stephanie Ashworth played a Music Man Sterling bass through an Ampeg SVT and sang some backing vocals. Greg Wells played an old Pearl kit and some shaker type things. If you're doing a new record, just put all your gear on the back for people like us. Check this out. Let me know what you think. I'm a big fan of it. And in the comments, let me know some records that remind you of this or that feel like they're in a similar genre. Thanks so much for watching this episode. It was a blast going through the mojo pedals that I like the most and telling a little bit of that story. It was also super cool to release this pedal on here, the Dream Mender. I really, really found myself impressed at how accurate it lines up with that 24 volt version. I've always been a fan of the Memory Man and I've always had it on a board here or there and then take it off because the knobs are so sensitive and they do break and the bypass is bad. There's all kinds of reasons that a memory man's difficult, but John has fixed all of that. A smaller enclosure, three simple controls, a nice, easy chorus vibrato toggle. I can't say enough good stuff about this. It's sonically fantastic and it's Mojo Hand. So go to that website, look at all the things they have to offer. I just covered the pedals that I like the most, but they have a lot of other designs that are super cool. So if you like this episode, hit like, subscribe, and there's a bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. If you are a patron of the JHS Show Patreon, I'm gonna give this away over there as well. If you're not, there's a link in the description below. Basically, you give a monthly fee and we just cover some extra material for you. And that helps us raise money for travel and all the things we do when we're interviewing people and building an archive of pedal history and kind of preserving all these cool stories. So it's really fun. I dive deep into a subject, um, you know, a long form kind of talk. It's super nerdy. So if you're a super nerd, you'll really like it. Go over there. There's also the jhsshow.com website. You can buy shirts and things that you might want. I don't know, but have a great day and play some Mojo in.